guys, how are you? It's, um, what is it, Saturday morning? And I have myself here one of the new kits I'm pretty excited about. Um, this is a Fontana Pinot Noir kit, and it's one of the new um, low end kits that makes great wine if you tweak the recipe, like I'm going to show you in this video series. Um, this is a Pinot Noir. Now I've made a couple of the Fontana premium kits um, Merlot and, and uh, had really really great results so I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to do the Pinot Noir. Um, for the link for this kit or this set of kits you can look below down the bottom of this video there will be a link and also if you read my blog on some of the particulars on uh, my reviews on these kind of kits and the things I do to kind of tweak them and bring the best out of them uh, because even though it's a low-end kit it uh, can make really nice wine and if you tweak the recipe if you just go with the recipe the way that it is or the directions it'll be a mediocre wine Actually, I can't really say that because I haven't made this particular kit in according to the directions. I just go based on what I see and what I do and through my experience. But, you know, most people that make these kits, um, these particular kind of kits, the low-end kits that have small bags of concentrate in them, um, if they make them to six gallons, they come out diluted and, and, you know, based off of what I've done with some of the other kits, like the Vino Italiano kits and so forth, that are no longer available, um, you know, uh, when you get great results, you don't want to, uh, change your process. So, you know, here we are. Let's look in this kit. It's a small bag of juice. What I like about these kits is they come with a bag and the bag has everything you need in it ingredients wise. Instructions uh, you know the other additives that you'll need, the yeast and so forth. Okay, um, so I'm going to take those out because I'm going to be using them. But you see this bag has a little hole in it. That fits perfectly over a carboy. So I like this kind of stuff because I could draw or write things on the bags and say, okay, well this is this kit. And basically the stuff that goes with the kit stays with the wine the whole time. And that's, that's my philosophy because I make a lot of different wines. And it's very easy for things to get, you know, uh, mixed up or mixed around and you forget which one is which. So, you know, here we go. Got a nice little bag. I know you guys saying, hey, crazy Sicilian Prince, he's uh, going nuts over a bag, but whatever. It comes with some labels. That's cool. I'll roll with that. Pretty nice. Nice looking label. And the rest is this bag of juice. It doesn't come with any of the equipment that you'll need. Just like, you know, if you were to make a cake mix, it doesn't come with pans, pots, and stuff like that. All right. So, I'm going to get set up to do this. What I have already done is I have cleaned a bucket and a spoon. And I'm going to get set up to do that now. What I'm going to first do, let me move this camera so you can see better. What I'm going to first do is fill that bucket up with some warm water. And you know, and one of the other things I'm going to do to this as well is um, this happens to be a pail that I had from a frozen pail. It's not necessarily like a uh, fermenter that you would buy, but it's a food grade pail. And I save those sometimes, and um, but you can buy a plastic fermenter like this one. And what I did is on the side of it, I drew like where five gallons, six gallons was. So 
I saved these particular panels because I want to make these kits, even though the directions say make them to six gallons, I'm making it to five gallons. It's going to be less diluted and just give you a, a way better wine. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to fill the bottom of this pail with warm water. All right, and I'll be right back. Now again, think about this too. Move that. That's a tiny bag of concentrate. Tiny bag. So, can you see that on this camera? Yeah, tiny bag of concentrate. <laughs> Lame camera skills, right? Anyway, tiny bag of concentrate, meaning that in order to get to six, I'm sorry, five gallons, five gallons in that bucket, I'm going to need to add a lot more water uh, to get there. So it's easier for me to lift up this pail and fill it by the sink. So I might, you know, when I do some of the higher end kits that you see me do, I put a little bit of water in the bottom because there's so much more concentrate. I'm going to put a lot more water in the bottom because it's just easier than to go back and forth with the bag. All right, let me get started. I'll be right back. All right, so this is what we're going to need at first. The packet that is marked A. It says Betonite. And what I'm going to do is tear the packet and I want to make sure I have warm water in the bottom. And there's my packet A. And I want to stir. I want to stir as I'm pouring this in slowly. I don't want to just dump the whole thing in. I want to stir as I'm going. And gradually, gradually throw it in. What that night is, it's, it's a clay. And what the clay does is it helps the wine to clear as it's fermenting. So, um, we can put that night in the bottom. Now the next step would be to add our concentrated juice. So I got a bottle decapper, I mean a uh, bag decapper. You could just use a pair of pliers and try to rip the top off of the rip the top off of the uh, bag. Um, again, this this tool is nice to have; it's just convenient. But a pair of uh, locking pliers will work fine. If you have those okay so I took the top off with juice and our next step is to pour in the concentrate Now this small little bag is very concentrated compared to some of the other kits. And you'll find that with the lower end kits you get a smaller bag with more concentrated concentrate. And with the bigger 
more higher end kits, the bags are bigger, still concentrate, but you know, most of the time the kit has um, less concentrated juice. So it's more close to what it will normally be. So the next thing I'm going to do is fill up this bag with some water and swish it around to pour it in there. Be right back. All right, so now that I have about five gallons of juice in here, I'm going to take this and stir it up like crazy. You really want to stir this well because the concentrate is so concentrated. The concentrate is so concentrated you want to get it uniformly mixed. So I'm going to be stirring this for a little while. Alright, so the next thing I'm doing is I'm taking my hydrometer, that's this thing, and it has a scale on the side. And I'm putting that in the wine juice, and I'm seeing that I'm coming up, the reading I'm taking, I'm seeing that I'm coming up around 1.090. That should give me if I ferment this completely dry probably around twelve and a half percent wine which is what I'm looking for with this Pinot Noir if it was more diluted that number that reading would be different um, Alright, so keep that in mind. One of the reasons, one of the things that I do when I make these kits is I deviate from the instructions. I make them to this reading as opposed to making them to how many gallons they tell you to put in. What does that mean? I'll get five less bottles of wine, but each bottle would be a much, much better quality of wine. Okay? So I'm going to take that out, put that in the sink, I'll take my spoon out, put that in the sink, And the next step would be to take our yeast, this is a special winemaking yeast, tear off the top and what you have to do is sprinkle that along the top just like that. Then after that, I'm going to snap the top on and put it in airlock. I make sure the top is snapped on tight. You don't technically need to snap the top on at this stage. You could leave the top off. Um, I don't want to take any chance of any kind of fruit fly or anything getting in there because that could turn this whole thing into vinegar. So, I choose to put the top on. All you need is one banana and that can bring you down. A banana in the house might have fruit flies and all that. So, um, anyway, so that's the deal. I'm going to put a airlock on top and I'll be right back. All right, this is my three-piece airlock. I filled it with water. I'm just going to put it in a grommet and I'm going to set that aside now for about uh, most likely a week to a week and a half before we go to the next phase and at, at this point um, we're done. I'm going to put this aside for a little bit but in a 
day or two, I'm going to look to see that fermentation has started. I'll see bubbles in that airlock. All right, thanks for watching. This is exciting. Pinot Noir. One of my favorites. Low end kit. Thanks for watching. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you like what you see, please subscribe to my video channel here on YouTube. And um, definitely check out my blogs, www.cookingitalianrecipes.com, with the dashes in the middle, or um, my other one on winemaking, how to make homemade wine.biz. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and have an awesome day.